go. Welcome to LPTV. It, it starts now. I'm McKenna Murray. And I'm Savannah Quinn. To start off this episode, I feel it's important to discuss something that happened near us and all around the world, the Women's March. I agree with you, Savannah. On President Trump's inauguration day, a march was held so that the voices of the people could be heard. Even in the Omaha metro area, thousands of people took part of the march. Along with Omaha residents, some AL students also took part. Here are some opinions and reactions from AL students. I thought it was really cool. Um, some people may not have liked it because uh, people were there for different reasons, but I thought it was really neat seeing women coming together. Some were anti-Trump, some were more women's right and togetherness, which was more where I was at. But just the fact that that many people could come together was really amazing to see. To fight for women's rights and equality of respect, because I personally don't think very many rights were taken away, it's just that they want equal respect. There were a lot of people definitely towards the front that were anti-Trump. Um, I think it was mostly Planned Parenthood that people were protesting. Um, they didn't like the things he had said during his campaign and some of his plans for future for women. They didn't feel like it was um, equal, I guess. I think it mainly provoked the march because Trump was initially against all sorts of stuff and he was trying to take away a lot of rights from people. I thought it was a really great opportunity just to see a lot of strong women bonding together, especially in like the current political climate when like the current president has said a lot of degrading things about women, just to see women standing up for themselves was good. Um, mostly, I know a lot of people didn't agree with it, but um, I mean it's our right in a democracy to protest and or to march and it's you may not agree with it but I think you should still just respect another person's rights. President Trump's inauguration is very controversial and many have taken to the streets for their voices to be heard. LPTV encourages that students learn more about topics similar to this so that your voice may also be heard. This is Alexander Short with Sydney Reynolds and Hunter Garrett signing out for LPTV. Thanks guys. Today we interviewed several members of our ALHS student body to get their reactions on Donald Trump's inauguration. Um, well, I like politics and I am actually a Hillary supporter, or more Bernie supporter, but I'm Democratic. So obviously I was a little disappointed in mostly our country, but our people too. And I thought it, it's like the inauguration is supposed to be a special event and it is historical and it's important for our country, but I was disappointed and I was a little sad, but I hope he can do well for us, I guess. <laughs> um, my initial reaction was like mixed feelings, but also uh, I'm glad that we don't have, uh, there was not complete chaos during the inauguration and um, it was a pretty uh, quiet day for the most part um for me his inauguration it probably wasn't as big a deal as the actual election night but just seeing him like actually becoming the president was like the final nail in the coffin for me it was for me it's really disappointing to see the improvements we've made just like accepting the lgbt community or with like women's health care and I feel like all of that's being rolled back and we're going backwards in progress rather than looking for new ways to make positive change. As usual, there are many differing views among our students. This has been Connor Gargis, Kaylee Hartenhoff, and Damaris Ramos reporting for LPTV. As always, it is important to stay informed and educated on such controversial topics. Thank you guys.
This week, our dance team hosted a dance clinic for young dancers. These girls worked hard, and after the clinic were able to perform at a basketball game. The clinic helped the girls hone their dancing skills and prepared them to become future Lynx dancers. There were lots of smiles, fun songs, and great dance moves. With more on the clinic and the performance, here are Ajin and Damien. The Yale Dance Team held a clinic for students aged preschool through fifth grade on Monday, January 23rd. What are you guys doing? We are having a kids clinic, and it's when we have kids from preschool to fifth grade come, and we teach them each individual dances, and we get to have them perform between the girls and the boys basketball game in front of their parents and the fans. Well, we usually do it once a year, usually in the springtime. And we just plan a night and everybody comes and we teach them dances. Um, my favorite part is probably getting to see everybody like pro progress throughout it and see how where they start from not knowing it very well to knowing it super well and showing all their parents and seeing all their faces. Well, we usually sign up for that. So like Macy and I signed up to take on the fourth and fifth graders and then other dancers signed up to take the other grades. Um, my favorite part is just seeing all the kids that come out and learning to dance, seeing how much fun they have. It's always a great event. This is, we've been doing this for years upon years, so it's always really enjoyable. Um, depends on the year. Sometimes we do it once or twice. Uh, we'll either do a fall and or a fall and a spring. Um, so the clinic is $20 a dancer. They get a free t-shirt and they get to perform the basketball game. They get in free. Um, we supply snacks and drinks during the clinic. It's um, like two and a half hours usually is how long the clinic is. You can come and just enjoy. Girls did a good job of helping the kids during the clinic. With the help of Kenny Gray and Ajin Manji, I'm Damien Sprague reporting for LPTV. Those girls were fantastic. Thank you guys. Speaking of fantastic, districts and group speech were held at AL on Saturday the 21st. Lots and lots of practice and preparation went into these performances. Our performers were even there at 6 in the morning getting ready. All of that hard work paid off as many of the groups are going to the state competition. With more on the road to state, here are Logan and Nick. On February 4th, our speech club students are going to state. Be sure to watch and wish them good luck. Uh, well, what you have to do is you have a script, but you kind of have to know your part, but you uh, have to write it. It's usually out of a book or just some sort of idea. And then you perform it, and you can't really have props, so you just have to use your voice. Um, it's basically um, the life of this uh, minority named Matthew, um, who's from Mexico, his family's from Mexico, and he, he has this dream of becoming a basketball player, but the challenge of, he faces is uh, his family is sent back to Mexico, so he has to make the decision of either going to become a basketball store star or uh, help his family. I'm definitely excited for this speech. Good luck, guys. This has been A. Viola, Nick Perry, and Logan Pruitt reporting for LPTV. All of us here at LPTV wish the state goers good luck. Thanks, guys. The ACTs are coming up quickly. Many of the students are getting ready for the test. The February ACT is fast approaching. We talked to tag teacher Miss Diamonds and some students to get a heads up on what to expect. Oh yeah, well John Baylor says to do a 30 yard dash and back before you go take the test so your brain is mentally ready to go. So make sure you would, I would say, make sure your brain is on for the morning and activity is always a good thing before you take a test so that your brain, your um, endorphins are firing as John Baylor likes to put it. Um, just try to do a little bit every night, maybe have some uh, longer study sessions before the test. Um, I'm in the ACT prep class with Steinmetz and just doing practice questions. Um, I would review. I would sign up for the John Baylor program. I would probably, I like to run in the morning, so I would probably get up and run. And then I would actually eat a very good breakfast and go to bed on time. Those things that normally you would do before a big test. LPTV encourages you to take that ACT to enhance your future education. With these tips in mind, keep them for the February ACT quickly approaching. 
With the help of Alyssa Dupelich, I'm Nick Perry reporting for LPTV. Although the winter sports season is coming to an end, everyone is still playing with heart. That was the main message during the ALTJ game. Both sides were wearing playing with heart shirts in memory of Mercedes Hart. For the highlights of the game and all things sports, we'll throw it over to the LPTV sports team. Last Friday, we went over to Thomas Jefferson for the Varsity Boys basketball game. TJ and AL dedicated the game to late Mercedes Hart, as well as TJ's dance team dedicating their dance to her and her family. It was really great to see the community coming together in support. Both student sections were wearing red shirts that read playing with heart and the link sure did. Lynx were up for most of the game and played very well for sure. The final score coming to 64-35 Lynx. With the help of McKenna Murray, this has been Savannah Quinn reporting for LPTV. This past week, the boys swim team has been busy setting records and saying farewell to their three graduating seniors. Three team records were broken, including the 200 medley relay, the 50 meter freestyle, and the 100 meter backstroke at the home duel versus Atlantic on Monday. Tuesday's duel proved bittersweet for both AL and LC as they both held their senior nights.
meet of the season versus Sioux City North, where yet another record was shattered. Reporting for LPTV, I'm Kaylee Hartoff. Thanks, sports team. Going back to Minion Humane Society, Ajin met some lovable pets. During this time of year, it's nice to have a furry pal to cuddle with. Let's take a look at the pets available for adoption. With the chilly weather going on, why not come down to Midlands Humane Society where you can find the perfect cuddle buddy for you. There are many cats here at Midlands. On this episode, we want you to meet Stella. She's a three-year-old domestic short hair. She loves to wrap herself around your legs. So come down and visit her. Just a reminder that kittens who are 5 months are $120, kittens from 6 months to 1 year are 100 and from 1 year to 6 years are 75 As you can see, there are a lot of empty cages. We are so happy for all the dogs that were adopted this past month, but there are still more that need adoption. This is Sam. He's a 2-year-old husky mix that needs a quiet home with a lot of tennis balls. He knows how to sit and shake and loves to give you kisses. Sit. So come down and meet him or any other animal here at Midland and get acquainted. Also a reminder that you can get your pet's license here. This has been Ajin Manji and Moses Morales reporting for LPT. That's all the time we have for this episode. Make sure to look out for the next one. From all the staff here at LPTV, thanks for watching.